Hey, what's up guys? John here, and E3 just ended last week, and I think everyone's still kind of buzzing about all the new reveals that happened this year. There are just so many games to talk about that it's really hard to talk about every single game that was at the game show this year. I know this from firsthand because I recorded a discussion video covering all the games uh, that I really wanted to talk about, and that lasted 50 minutes, and I don't really want to bore people with that, so I'm just going to be talking about the games that impressed me the most and that left the most impact on. I am still going to be doing it in like chronological order because that just helps me remember which games were actually announced. Anyway, let's get started. Microsoft Press Conference. Uh, there was a couple games here that got me really excited. We got Elden Ring, which looks awesome. I mean, From Software is probably the best developer around right now. Their games are just ridiculous. The combat's intense and impactful. I just really love their stuff. And the story of George R.R. Martin of Game of Thrones fame. Push aside your biases from how that terrible season finale series finale even put that aside please this is not him i promise you it's not him <laughs> but remember the seasons that were good that they, they were good because his books are fantastic and they're well written uh, and that, that that finale was not representative of his work in the slightest <laughs> so uh put that with from software's killer gameplay uh and i think we're gonna have a game for the ages game of the generation possibly sekiro just i liked bloodborne but sekiro was they're they're around the same in my book uh, I just like a lot of the combat choices in Sekiro. Man, the story was like an actual story for once, which was actually pretty cool. I love the giant bosses of older games, but Sekiro, man, the story really set it apart from the From Software pack for me. So yeah, Tales of Arise is something I've wanted uh, for the Tales series for God knows how long. Uh, I think that with an increased budget and listening to fan requests and responses, they've improved over the years, and some of the bad uh, team members that were a part of the previous games, I kind of made it lose its focus a bit. They're gone now. I think this one could be probably the first good one in a while, and the previous games have gotten better. Like, it's been a pretty smooth ride, but man, after playing Vesperia Deluxe, I'm hoping they take inspiration of that because that was the last like, oh my god, this is the best one the series has had since. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. It seems like with each passing detail that we learn about this game, I'm getting more and more excited about it. I knew Respawn was going to make a good Star Wars game, but being able to see what they actually did and then hearing that it's a Metroidvania? Hello? Why would you not advertise that? That... The... The... It just makes it so much more interesting going to any world you want first, learning the skills you want. It's not this bland Jedi's journey into becoming a Jedi. It's our journey. We get to choose what we want to do, and we get to see how this Jedi progresses. And although it has a character, I'm basically just going to be putting my face on it the entire time and being like, yeah, this is my Jedi story. I, I was here the entire time. It's like how uh, the Sonic fanfiction community has, like, blank the hedgehog, like your name inserted the hedgehog. It's like John Skywalker. I can see it now. <laughs> I'll be up there with Mace Windu and... Ewan McGregor. Yeah, but this game looks pretty sick. Uh, the combat looks a lot more in line with previous action games that, I mean, like God of War, the Sekiro's, the Breath of the Wilds, the, the everything. It seems pretty cool. Uh, yeah, but that game should be sick. Okay, Cyberpunk is looking next level. Like, it is looking fine. Oh my god, Keanu Reeves just coming out and just actually being Keanu Reeves on that stage was the best press conference moment, I think, of all the E3 press conferences. Just in terms of sheer, what the fuck is going on? But yeah, uh, Keanu being in Cyberpunk on top of Cyberpunk looking absolutely fantastic, phenomenal. All the gameplay we've seen is pretty amazing and all the stuff we've heard about, you know, behind closed doors is pretty damn good too. I think this is gonna be a game for the ages. Definitely one of the better showings at E3, mainly because it is coming out pretty early, but I don't know how likely that is to being delayed considering CD Projekt Red's history with delays. So for some reason, Bethesda decided to actually show up to E3 for literal to no payoff besides Doom Eternal and Wolfenstein and, you know, Akumi Nakamura. 
but yeah the game i really want to focus doom eternal mainly because it's one of the only games that they showed that wasn't a cg trailer <laughs> but yeah this game is looking like a sure and bona fide improvement over the 2016 doom the weapons are looking sick the gore is looking intense the stakes have never been higher for humanity and i just can't wait for this game to come out in november there are a lot of games coming out in November, people, and keep that in mind as we continue going through the games on our list. Square Enix showed off two big games that I really want to talk about. First being Final Fantasy VII Remake. Holy shit! I did not think this game would turn out to be as good as it is. God damn! They turned everything great about the first game and, you know, kind of converted it to a modern action game. They talked about how remaking isn't going to be sticking to turn-based strategy, but the fact that they tried to implement it and succeeded in implementing a turn-based strategy mechanic, or at least one that resembles a turn-based strategy game, is fantastic. It's something I've wanted in a, in a game for years. It's kind of fulfilling, like, a more satisfying Kingdom Hearts experience. Like, the gameplay looks kind of similar, but uh, since the Kingdom Hearts 2 combat designer is working on this game, it, it's gonna be a pretty good action game. And the fact that it looks like it's doing so much service to the original story is so amazing. I am so happy that they're doing this game the justice it deserves. It's one of the most important classic games of all time, and now it's being brought into the modern day in a way that I don't think we'd ever imagine. The amount of detail and the amount of character moments just in the brief gameplay we've seen so far is so amazing, and the way that they're interpreting this story I can't wait for next year, you guys. It's going to be a magical moment, and I'm probably going to be sharing it with all of you. Secondly, we have the Avengers game. Now, we didn't see a lot on the surface. Uh, a lot of gameplay details have come about uh, since the actual press conference, even though the only thing we learned at the press conference were which Avengers were going to be the main cast of the game, which we kind of could infer just because of the movies. But anyway, hearing about gameplay, hearing impressions, and seeing a little bit of leaked gameplay that looks like an actual fly on the wall recorded it. But now we kind of have a better idea of what we're going to be expecting. It's kind of going to be a Spider-Man PS4 situation only. The story seems like it's going to be a series of set piece action moments, kind of similar to what we saw in the gameplay with Iron Man, Thor, Captain America, Hulk, yada yada yada, all working together at the same time. And we're going to be given a spectacle as we, you know, progress through the game. Uh, we can also kind of gather that we're going to be getting more Avengers and more story as the game progresses and as the years go by. It's kind of going to be like a comic book universe, kind of, which is actually kind of a cool concept. We're going to be having our own universe that we can play through and kind of like an MMO. We're going to be having new Marvel stories brought to us by some of the lead talents at Square Enix. I have faith that this game is going to turn out way better than I think it's looking right now to a lot of people, and just hearing about the gameplay impression and hearing that it looks good, I'm just really excited and way more excited than I was going out of the press conference at Square Enix's show. Alright, so now we're going to go to the part that I'm in love with. Hey, let's talk about Nintendo's Killer Direct. I was not expecting it to be that good, like they had so many games we were expecting that we knew it was going to be fine if they only talked about those games, and man did they deliver, holy crap. Alright, so I guess we'll just talk about it now. Uh, so Smash Brothers, we got two huge pieces of news. So we got Dragon Quest, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Dragon Quest, and I love all the characters, I mean, I've only really played uh, Dragon Quests 1, 3, 5, 8, and then I'm hoping to play 11 soon. So, but, like, with the announcements we got that the protagonist of 8 and Erdrick, who is basically Sword Goku, is going to be our protagonist, uh, or not the protagonist, but our hero, who's going to be playable in Smash. I am really excited, and I am so happy for all the people outside of Japan who really, really are excited about this character. And, hey, I'm pretty excited, too. I started playing 5 on the DS for the fifth time, so hey, at least 5 and 5, that makes a, you know, cool, unique thing. <laughs> and of course, we got the Baron Bird that we've been waiting for since Melee and Brawl. Banjo-Kazooie is finally home in Smash Brothers with Nintendo, and all is right in the world. The birds are chirping a new sound, 
and I don't know. We're on greener pastures, more spirally mountains, in fact. I've been wanting Banjo Kazooie forever. Banjo Kazooie are characters that really are pinnacles of my childhood. It was one of the first games I ever played, and I think I played it before Mario 64. So that might be. Uh, if that or Mario Sunshine is my first platformer ever, so a take with that what you will, but man, it's great to see Microsoft being able to collaborate with Nintendo like this, and I hope more of it comes in the future, possibly a Banjo-Kazooie game? That would be ideal. I, uh, make it more like Kazooie, and a little bit less like Tui, and not at all like Nuts and Bolts, and then you have everyone's money. I mean, Tui is big and expansive, but man, the straight focus gameplay in the focused worlds of Banjo-Kazooie, it's night and day. I think I like that one way better. That also might just be nostalgic on this. Anyway, the first game besides that they showed was Luigi's Mansion, and holy crap, I don't think I was expecting that at all. I didn't expect Luigi's Mansion to be, like, possibly one of my games of the show. Uh, it looks like everything I wanted Dark Moon to be, and then some. It's mixing the good Luigi's Mansion 1 elements with the good Luigi's Mansion 2 elements, and mixing it together and making the perfect and quintessential game in the Luigi's Mansion franchise. We got portrait ghosts, we got different and varied locations, we got one big free roaming mansion, just like the first game. That was the thing I didn't like about Dark Moon, and everything else in Dark Moon was really good, and now it's everything. Everything I could have wanted in a Luigi's Mansion game is coming out. 2019. I don't know why they didn't give a date. It really doesn't make sense if that's going to be their big clincher, and it has the potential to be. It surprised everyone. Uh, I don't know when it's coming out, and that's a little weird. That makes me a little nervous it might get delayed, but I think it would be a perfect December game, if not an October game, for a spooky, scary Halloween release date. Wouldn't be surprised about that. Either. And of course, we got to talk about Link's Awakening. Uh, we'll leave the big thing for the last thing because, man, that could just, you know, bungee jump off the cliff into the mountains of Zelda speculation videos I could be doing for the rest of my life. But Link's Awakening looking amazing. Uh, Grezzo recently confirmed to be the developers on this, so if you've played Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask 3D, you know they're going to be really, really, really faithful to the original remakes and I think uh, everyone's really excited about this it looks adorable that amiibo is adorable and I could not have pressed buy fast enough god my amiibo addiction is out of control please help me send help and hey we got a Zelda maker which I did not think we'd be getting it so fast off of the heels of Mario Maker 2 just coming out wow that comes out a couple days in the future huh right after my birthday cool Man oh man were the third party games a pack in this press conference too. We got confirmation of Collection of Mana finally getting translated, and we finally have an English version of Seiken Desetsu 3 everyone. This is a huge deal because this game has never been translated and released in America. And now we don't have to re rely on, you know, existing ROMs. And we also got a remake of that game, which looks like an amazing action RPG that's coming out early next year. We also got Witcher 3 confirmed. I cannot believe they crammed this game down onto a single cart, and all the DLC is included. It's honestly just a technical masterpiece, and I wouldn't be shocked if Panic Button had anything to do with this, because their track record of getting, you know, current gen games on Switch, they're making the impossible possible. And with a sweet 2019 release date, oh boy, that is soon. We have the triumphant return of Sir Travis Touchdown. Uh, Travis Strikes Again was a apparently not great. Uh, didn't play it because I played it at PAX and I was not a huge fan and I was hoping it would be good in the final product, but heard it's a little mixed. Hopefully no more heroes returns to the series highs, which, you know, it probably will. It's going back to the tried and true hack and slash gameplay that we actually get a little bit of a glimpse in the trailer, but I'm pretty sure that's just CGI. Hopefully it looks that good. Luigi's Mansion 3 certainly made an impression of what the Switch is actually capable of. We also got Panzer Dragoon Remake, which is kind of crazy. We got a ass looking Contra game that looks like, I don't know, it looks like it has a panda in it, and that's all I really care about in that game. And the Contra Anniversary released the same day, woohoo! We also have Cadence of Hyrule, which released shortly after the Direct, which was pretty damn fun if I do say so myself. We had Daemon X Machina making its resurgence after its 
controversial demo. I was not a huge fan the way it performed, and this look game looks like it's been updated. It looks like it's really been enhanced, and they've been listening to feedback, so that's pretty cool too. Fire Emblem released a short video, and we saw it a lot in Treehouse. There's a five-year time jump, which is where I'm going to be drawing the line, because I don't want to go into spoilers or even learn anything about this game before I play it. Pokemon is also a little bit controversial, uh, so I'm going to be talking about this in another video, but Pokemon's show here was a little bit rough. The regional decks only is a bit of a hit to the game's hype, and the reasons why that happened is not too reassuring, honestly. So again, I'm going to be talking about this at a later time, because Pokemon's a huge influence on me and just one of my favorite, if not my favorite game series of all time, so yeah. We also got Animal Crossing New Horizon, which is looking fantastic. Uh, it got delayed to March 2020, but I think they need all the time they need to make it the perfect Animal Crossing game. And the fact that they're not, they're delaying it only to reduce down on crunch, it's a nice thing to hear in an industry full of sad stories and horrendous layoffs. and kind of a sad sight, so good on you Nintendo, I'm all for it. And finally, we had the granddaddy of all announcements, we had the confirmation of Legend of Zelda Breath of Wild sequel. That is wild, I had no expectation for that game appearing until 2020, and the fact that we're hearing about it now, how long has this been in development? We know Monolith Soft has been recruiting for this game, but the fact that it's coming out with an announcement at this year's E3? I think this game is coming out sooner than we think, guys. I really do think this game might release maybe holiday next year to be with, you know, Bayonetta and Animal Crossing in a already looking pretty stacked 2020. I'm sorry if I missed any other games that people are interested in. These are just the top games I can honestly think of right now, and I'll be covering a lot more games of this in the future, but these games are games to look out for. You know, there was a lot of doom and gloom this year with like Epic Game Store, get just CGI trailers. Hell, Sony and Activision didn't even show up to the party, so although there was a lot of doom and gloom, there was a lot of positivity, and you know, I'm all about that positivity. So uh, in the future, look forward to all things looking hype and gaming and everything in between. Till next time, guys. Talk to you later, guys.